Great. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our third panel, uh, Policy Work and Opportunities Outside of London. Um, I think it's very easy to think if you want to work in a think tank or in the policy world, then you need to be close to Westminster or Whitehall. But that is absolutely not the case. Um, and I'm hoping today that our panel, excellent panel we've got here today, will prove it. Um, so with us uh, today, we've got Becky Newton, uh, the Director of Public Policy and Research at the Institute for Employment Studies, Darren Baxter, um, Housing Policy and Partnerships Manager at the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, and Dr. Claire Thomas, hopefully joining us later, um, who is a Senior Research Officer um, at the Senate Research. I can see Claire's joined us now. Excellent. Um, so to kick off, with, each speaker is going to speak for five minutes, telling us a little bit about where they work, their organisation and their job, and then we should have some time for questions. So please do put your questions in the chat as they come along, um, or when we go into the Q&A session, do feel free to virtually raise your hand and we'll unmute you and let you ask. Um, but without further ado, I'll hand over to Becky if you want to go first. Hi, thank, thanks very much for that, Jess. Um, so yeah, Becky Newton from the Institute for Employment Studies. So we are um, an independent apolitical um, research organisation based down in Brighton. Um, we've been established for over 50 years now, um, have always been located um, down here, sort of initially on university campuses. Um, and, and now we um, have independent offices and um, hybrid working arrangements, hence I am at home rather than in the office. Um, we've um, been leading research on um, employment policy and HR practice, as I say, for over 50 years, and we're a charity with a mission to improve um, employment policy and practice. We have two main um, lines of business, the bit that I head up, which is around policy research, and then I have um, a co-director, Claire, who looks after our research for employers and um, consultancy with employers. And I think it's having both those angles makes us quite interesting in, in the research and think tank world. Um, we do all sorts of work. We have no core funding at all. So we um, compete um, within the market and come up with ideas for research we want to do to gain funding, uh, which allows us to be influential um, within policy, uh, as well as employment practice. Um, so we work for the government departments. My particular portfolio often focuses on skills and young people. So I've done a lot of work for the Department for Education. Um, we do a lot of work around the Department for Work and Pensions, sort of um, employment programmes and support. Um, we work for the devolved governments and combined authorities. So we've led work in Wales. Uh, obviously, um, we do go up to London. Um, we do some local work, but just because we're based in Brighton doesn't mean this is um, the focus of our our research um, and we work internationally so we've done a large number of European studies um, and some international consultancy work. Um, research themes, employment might sound a bit narrow, uh, in fact we cover education from early years through to adult skills and everything in between, so pre-16, further education, higher education, um, and, and career stuff in there. So we will have a focus on older workers and sort of midlife transitions. Um, really interested in the quality of work, um, people experience, very interested in that theme for young people. And we've been mobilized on that since the start of the pandemic and the recessionary and crisis effects um, that we thought were emerging. And obviously the educational experience has been one that's um, needed investigation in these times, but we're also interested in health and work inclusion um, and, and diversity, um, which tends to be a cross-cutting theme. Um, and we tackle um, organisational development um, and capacity. So working in the South East in Brighton, obviously this has been, um, well, it, it's changed a lot in the pandemic. We, we still are very connected with London and will regularly travel, um, but, you know, clients, span the UK. So the DWP has offices in Sheffield and would typically, uh, back in the day of travel, uh, expect us to go up to see them there. So you might be based um, out of a centre, but you will travel 
for field work. Um, we do qualitative research and surveys as well. We do other sort of methods. Um, and, and sort of hybrid working is actually um, provided opportunity. So I've been able to liaise with colleagues far more internationally because I'm now sort of far more online. So we've just got a partnership project, for example, uh, working with researchers in Australia. Um, I think that was probably it on the kind of geographic spread. Um, I think for us, the important thing is to be able to set out an evidence based um, policy and practice approaches to be influential within our work. And so we have a strong um, focus on quality and rigor in our research studies um, so that we can sort of disseminate on evidence based effective practices. Thank you. Great, thanks, Becky. Got lots of questions already coming in, but we'll save them for the end um, and go over to Darren next. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm a policy partnerships manager at the Joseph Ranchi Foundation, and so um, or JRF. As the JRF are, we were founded in 1904 by the sort of Quaker industrialist Joseph Ranchi, who you might know as the sort of creator of Kit Kats and fruit pastels and things like that. And he was also a sort of social reformer and uh, one of the first people, he, he did a variety of different things, focused a lot on sort of industrial in rela uh, relations in the factories he ran in New York, sort of giving people pensions and quality work, things like that. Um, founded a village called New Earswick, which our sister organization the House, Joseph Ranji Housing Trust uh, still runs and also was one of the first people to study poverty in the UK and sort of mapped and quantified poverty in particularly in York and so in 1904 he left an endowment to a foundation to carry on that work and we're we're sort of still doing it uh, so we're based in York in Joseph's house um, and we also have and that's our sort of head office uh, we also have an office in London and one in Glasgow and sort of out of Glasgow we, we focus particularly on Scotland as you'd expect but also uh, we also do work on Northern Ireland and Wales. Um, our focus so sort of overarching focus is on poverty and poverty, solving poverty in the UK and we do that through sort of a lot of different means so the bit that I'm focused on is particularly our sort of policy and research work so that sees us digging into either evidence you know building up the evidence base on what drives policy and what could be done to solve it or setting out arguments in reports and blogs and other things for how politicians could try and reduce poverty and reduce destitution improve economic insecurity and my work is typically fo focused on how housing and the role that housing plays in either sort of driving down living standards because of how much it costs or the sort of more other aspects of the housing debate like sort of ownership and quality and security and um, uh, all pointing towards how we build a more just equitable housing system. We also do campaigning work um, and recently ran a campaign which is sort of across the social justice sort of poverty sector focused on uh, keeping the £20 lifeline to universal credit. So during the pandemic, the government increased uh, universal credit um, by £20 a week. And then that they sort of initially said that would be time limited. Um, we felt they should keep it. Um, and so we launched this big cross sector, quite noisy campaign calling on them to keep it, which managed to get them to extend it for, I think, six months. But unfortunately, in the end, they did cut it, but did instead put quite uh, make a lot of meaningful changes to universal credit, which put two billion pounds into the system and therefore the pockets of people on low incomes. And we also act as a funder um, that might be funding the sort of policy research of of an organisation, including, I think, some of Becky's work possibly in the past. Um, and we also funded various things like kind of cultural events or documentaries that try and tell a different story or tell the same story in a different way about poverty. And we're increasingly looking at what well, we've just sort of set up a programme called sort of our emerging futures, 
Um, and that's because when you're doing this sort of policy research, think tank you, Steph, a lot of the time uh, you're kind of working within the parameters of the system and, you know, what you can get away with with government and try to convince them to do things on their terms. And we wanted to put some resource behind um, trying to imagine a better future and what that might look like and trying to put some money behind either sort of grassroots organisations or particular places to try and put into practice what that sort of imagined future might be. Um, so that, that that's mainly it for me. I think I'll just sort of responding to some of the things like you said, uh, you know, we're a Yorkshire-based organisation. Most of our staff are here. And uh, that does involve a bit of travel back and forth between London, but we do try to get them to come to us as well um, and across the four nations. And we are um, in the lovely position, as, as I say, where it's this endowed foundation, which means that we're, uh, we have quite a lot of cash in the bank, which we can invest to create a, an income, which compared to the other things I've worked for, where you have to go out and fundraise is, is quite a nice position to be in. I think that's it for me. Great. Thanks, Darren. Um, now over to Claire. Uh, thank you, Jess, and, and thank you for inviting me to speak at uh, an interesting event. Um, so my name's Claire. Um, I'm a senior researcher in um, Welsh Parliament. Um, for anyone not familiar with the Welsh Parliament, it's a democratically elected body um, that represents the interests of Wales and its people, and it's known as the Senedd, and that's how I'll refer to it as. Um, it makes laws for Wales and it agrees um, Welsh taxes and holds the Welsh Government to account. Um, I work within the Senate Commission, which oversees the running of the Senate in the Research and Information Service. So the service provides um, politically impartial um, advice and research to the 60 members of the Senate and their staff and committees. Um, the work of the Senate involves a number of key areas, so it provides an inquiry service and where researchers provide confidential answers to aid committee work and um, to inform plenary debates and legislation and constituency work. And um, it provides support for committees. So we provide research for each committee in the form of briefings or member support. Um, it produces publications. So this can involve sort of short research articles or longer research articles that's available for everybody, members of the public, um, to read and is available on the website. Um, it provides a caseworker hub um, with constituency guides on areas like welfare benefits, or it could just be the provision of sort of hotline numbers or stakeholder contacts. Um, it also provides um, information on um, research, on finance and budgets and statistics, but I do have to say that's not my area of work. Um, it also provides a new knowledge exchange service where we support the exchange of information between external researchers, academics and um, members of the Senate as well. Um, so just to give you a sort of overview of my role as a senior researcher, um, I started at the Senate six months ago, um, so I'm fairly new, but it seems to have gone quite quickly, so I think that's a, a good thing. Um, but before joining, I worked at a Welsh-based think tank called the Bevan Foundation, um, where I specialised uh, in sort of immigration policy and managing the impact of migration in Wales. Um, since joining the Senate, I've been able to sort of continue that work on immigration, although it isn't a devolved policy area. And I've expanded my research interests to look at sort of policies more generally, human rights, poverty and social security. Um, given my areas of research, I provide, primarily provide support to the Equalities and Social Justice Committee. Um, but given that's quite a broad range um, in terms of its remit, the range of um, research areas that I cover also provide support to, to different um, committees. 
So for example, I've been able to provide um, support to the Children and Young People and Education Committee and the Health Committee to look at the Nationality and Borders Bill. Um, I've worked with the Petitions Committee. So given the remit of the Petitions Committee can be anything and everything. Um, I've recently worked on an inquiry on universal basic income, looking specifically at the pilot proposed in Wales. Um, being a sort of senior researcher is quite a hands-on job. Um, working with committees, you have to sort of have the expert subject knowledge to be able to support the committee um, with the research or the inquiry that they're undertaking. Um, so that can be, you know, you have that ownership of the inquiry and that research um, work that they're undertaking to ensure that the committee members have the updated research in the area that they're looking at. Um, I work primarily for, as I say, the Equality and Social Justice Committee, which um, sort of looks and scrutinises legislation and, and policy and holds the, the Welsh Government to account. Um, it's remit looks at obviously equality and human rights, but also poverty, um, community cohesion and other areas. But because it's a equality committee, it can look at any policy really um, through the lens of equality and human rights. So it's quite a varied, um, quite exciting job to do. Um, and yeah, it's, um, I, I think one of the questions is about working um, at home and whether there's any opportunities to, to carry on working from home. Um, I'm currently working from home now. I mean, the Senev is based in Cardiff and there's lots of other sort of satellite offices across Wales. Um, but I think there is a move to, to sort of go back to work in the Senev because it's obviously working um, with committees and members of the Senate. So I think there is a move to sort of go back and work in more of a face-to-face -face environment. So that's me. Thank you. Great, thank you. So we've had panellists from Brighton, Cardiff and York there, um, but there are many opportunities um, in different parts of the country, not least um, in the Scottish Parliament, the Northern Ireland Executive, but also in think tanks based in you know, Manchester or Leeds or all different parts of the UK. And I will just flag, um, as Sarah um, from the Centre for Progressive Policy Studies has just put in the chat, a lot of think tanks now we're in this hybrid world are recruiting, even if they're London based, are recruiting people in different parts of the country. So do check out those opportunities. Um, but I'll try and get some questions in. Um, I think the, the first one I'll start off with um, is uh, there's a couple on, this, on a similar theme, which I'll I'll put to you, Becky, first, but then other people do um, do jump in because I think they came in during your presentation. Um, is one here from Freddie saying, "Do you ever find that you can't be unbiased about issues since they affect you and your employment slash employees?" And similarly, Sophie asks, "What do you mean by apolitical?" Great, thank you. Um, I think our work theme um, on employment practice, particularly in policy. Uh, just sort of leads us to have to be a sort of best practice employer and to really consider our policy in terms and conditions of what we do. Um, so most recently we've introduced what we think is best in market paternity uh, kind of pay and leave policy um, and we do try and sort of embed loads of best practice. So we are unbiased in the ways that we lead our research and the way we report it but it does have an influence that, you know, we absolutely need to be, to be able to lead um, independent evaluation and research um, for government bodies. I think that leads us nicely into what it means to be apolitical. It means we're not affiliated with any particular party. Um, so, so we don't lobby or campaign at IES. We are a, a research organization um, that enables us to lead evaluation um, for um, kind of UK national and regional governments, no matter um, which party is, you know, currently in government, 
um, because we are seen to be um, unbiased in that way. In fact, evidence-led. Um, we do, you know, um, nonetheless have issues that we want to shout about. We um, did a lot of work um, around the pandemic on what happens with vacancies, which you know, that was a JRF funded project, um, and also sort of tracking um, the situation for young people and sort of wanting to sort of mobilise government and organisations on a response for young people. So where we've got evidence, we can then sort of not exactly lobby, but actually sort of champion those issues to try and get a better policy response. Um, so it, it's not that being um, independent and apolitical means you, you say nothing. It's just you have to be very evidence based in, in what you say and how you say it. Great, thanks very much. Um, the next question I will put to Darren because it's specifically in the context um, of the, the JRF, but perhaps you could tell us a bit more about the, the sector in, in general, about whether there are opportunities to work in, in regions other than York, whether there are um, other places that um, careers or roles that, that you can apply for. Yeah, sure. Um, so we recruit, we tend to recruit in between York and London. Um, so you will have one of those would be your sort of home office. Um, so yes, but I think as we sort of come out of the pandemic, we've shifted to a much more sort of flexible working. So I, when I first started here, I lived in York and had quite a short commute in, but I've moved to another part of Yorkshire where it's a bit further away. So I, I work principally, you know, some weeks every day at home, some weeks most of the time and just come in when I need to. Um, and I think a lot of, um, you know, pretty much everybody I talk to in this sector at the moment um, is in a very similar place where it, you might pop into the office for meetings that make sense to you know, get everybody around the same table um, or for like sort of team things where you actually want to actually see your colleagues properly in person. Um, but the rest of the time you're at home. And I think often if you're particularly if you're on sort of the policy side of the policy or the research side of the think job, you do tend to find yourself like hidden behind research articles or behind a computer, like typing away for long stretches of time. So even before the pandemic, I kind of spent quite a bit of time working at home because it just made more sense than doing that somewhere quiet rather than in, in a noisy office. So I think, yes, definitely um, it's possible, you know, it's largely possible to work remotely from other parts and traveling when you need to. Thanks very much. Um, a question from a different Sophie, um, and I'll put this to you, Claire. It's about kind of research skills. Um, and Sophie asks, do you need quantitative and qualitative research skills to work in a think tank or a research role? Thank you. It's an interesting question. And part of my sort of overview, I stressed about sort of statistics, but it's not my research area. So my background is um, qualitative research. So um, I worked at a social research company um, based in, in Wales um, for a number of years as a, as a qualitative researcher. And my background was, um, obviously I'd, I'd done a PhD, so I had some research skills from, from, from that, um, but I specialise in qualitative research. Um, and I did that for, for many years work, work in there. So I think it is good to have some either quant or, or qual skills. Um, and obviously some, some people have a, a range of, of both. And I think that, you know, that does help to have both of those skills. But I think, you know, it's um, qualitative research, for instance, you, you do tend to, to learn on, on the job, you know, and that's how... Um, I was recruited many years ago to, to start that and, and it became um, part of, of my role there. Um, so I think the social research companies that I know like to have, you know, for people to have those skills, but usually they tend to look for um, uh, someone with a degree or, or something like that rather than particular skills you know and you start off then as a, a junior researcher and work your way up as I say I think qual research is, is you tend to, to learn on the job and, and 
over the years. So the role I'm doing now, um, I mean, I think that, you know, a um, degree in a certain area would be enough to do the, the, the research that's, that's required. But as I say, it, it is good to have those sort of on the job skills that you learn. Great, thanks Claire. Um, Conscious, we've only got about five more minutes and there's lots of questions. Unfortunately, we won't have time to quite answer all of those. Uh, but I'm gonna ask one of the ones that's just coming because it's very relevant to this panel, um, which, which is from Nadia who asks, what are the benefits in your opinion of working in a non-London based think tank compared to a London based one? And um, anyone who wants to, to come in, please do. You don't have to live in London. <laughs> is one of the principal benefits. Cheaper rent. Cheaper rent, I think is given. <laughs> I, I, I think I've I've worked across a mix. So, like the things that I've worked in have tended to be based between the north and London, and I think you know both are great in in different ways. I think um, the main point I think is that there are more think tanks in the north than you might think there are, and if you want to live in the north for whatever reason, not in the north, sorry, in out of London, um, you if you want to do that for whatever reason whether that's because you want to live there or it's close to family or whatever um there are there are sort of opportunities to do it and it you know in, in many ways it's very similar to working in a think tank in london great thank you might be able to just squeeze one more in um if the answer could be it could be fairly brief just a quick question about work-life balance um and related to that kind of opportunities for part-time becky i saw you quickly mentioned in the chat um that you have those opportunities so do you want to uh, talk about this one quickly yeah i mean i think this is part of um maybe to be a best practice employer um you know flexible and part-time working patterns um allow people um to work not just for work life balance, but around their sort of personal contacts and, um, you know, perhaps childcare or adult care responsibilities. We want, we want all that talent in our workforce. So we have some really flexible models. We had a lot of flexibility with evolving that um, as a result of the pandemic. Um, you know, part of our flexibility sort of new offer is that we have. Um, we have ranged a bit more in terms of where where we employ people. Uh, I know somebody asked, did they have to be in Brighton? Once upon a time, that that was a bit more of our emphasis, and we also had a London office. Um, with you know the connectivity offered by um, video conferencing means um, that we've been able to sort of widen our net and access again, um, you know, the best talent from across the country. So this has been a really good awakening for actually how we've worked at IES and we do now have lots of kind of flexible opportunities so that we can sort of maximise um, the talent that we can access. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we're nearly out of time, um, but please do have a look at the comments comment section because some helpful um, think tankers are, are jumping in to answer some of your questions there. I mean, uh, just one of them I saw, do you need to have a master's degree? Well, I certainly don't, and I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, but um, I'm a senior researcher, Jess Sergeant um, at the Institute for Government. Um, but yes, unfortunately, we are out of time. So thank you so much to our panel. That was hopefully, uh, that was a really interesting discussion. And hopefully we got to answer some of your questions. Um, just a reminder, and, uh, the next panels will be starting at 5.55. Um, there's session 4A on joining the, se the sector as a career change and session 4B on external engagement in think tanks. Um, but thank you everyone for joining and thanks again for our panel um, and see you at the next session. <laughs>